the DB segment of the highway may stand to make money and some progress to some, but how much is its nine mile length costing? Let's talk about that. An estimated five billion dollars TT. Maybe this is why the IDB said it was overrated. Of course, as you know, they refused the government financing. This price has practically broken a new Trinidad record, and it is now said that this Debe to Mondesi section costs the most out of the entire highway. That's right, this is the most expensive segment in the entire highway. This small segment will encompass destroying a current gas line, capping a whopping 61 wells, which means sealing them, and they will never be used at another time. Wasting 400 acres of agricultural land and building nine bridges. Now we do not mean to burn any bridges by extolling these facts, but we do hope it will show that the citizens' money is being used to keep the citizens poor and make the rich richer. A good example of this is that people are losing their homes while a few are gaining more and more mansions than ever before in the process of this highway segment being built. Perhaps that is why there is such a lack of transparency in the building of this highway by the government and the contractors associated. They don't let anybody know about their corruption. All this has been seen before in the past, my friends. It reminds me of the Trans-Texas Corridor that started in the U.S., a super statewide 4,000-mile toll road network of roads between Mexico and Texas, dividing communities. But of course, the state said it was just to help with business. Farms and ranches were destroyed and divided all in the name of better business. Is their costing of 125 billion US dollars to build this helping big business trade and not small town business? We think so. Why don't we go and ask the people who lived in those places? Is it that the business will help Walmart to get their cargo into the US cheaper and faster? Or is it that the business will help the farmers be able to move more swiftly and effectively? Why did they really build that Trans-Texas Corridor? Was it to serve the people or was it to serve the big companies who don't care about the people and only about themselves? You know, it was pushed as being the only solution to the urban congestion on the roadways. But was that the real reason for taking more than half a million acres of private property under the law known as eminent domain? Eminent domain, if abused by having amendments passed with vague descriptions to allow unfair use through loopholes, this law can be used to take advantage of people and take advantage of their properties, as it is being seen right now all over the world. These are land rights that are being abused by our governments and we need to stand up and say no. The Americans talk about their eminent domain problems on a daily basis. Why aren't we? More and more land is taken from rightful owners and placed into government or a wealthy and powerful businessman's hands. Being poor in itself opens you up to being weak politically as you know. This is why the poorer people can be herded around from place to place so very easily. They lack money, which has all the moving power in the world, right? You be the judge. This is how financial crisis has affected us. Is it that just because a person is poor, they have no rights? 
on a worldwide scale and even right here in little Trinidad and Tobago we see that people are sent out of their homes and they are told that it is temporary they get vouchers to rent other places temporarily while construction happens where their old home used to be but when they try to move back in, they find their neighborhood completely commercialized, built up to such an extent that they cannot even move back in. Why is this? Well, because they have not been compensated. So, so they have not been paid back the money that the government said they would pay them. They were instead fed lies. And now their choice is to continue to rent somewhere else and rebuild money so that they can one day move back into their house or they can purchase land in a cheaper area or they can become homeless. And yes, that happens a lot more than you would expect. That is why land rights are important because if we do not stick up for it, the government will take it right away from you, give it right away to somebody else, make sure you're too poor to afford it, and you too will end up homeless. Now to Texas where we will originate this broadcast tomorrow night. There's a huge project underway in Texas. It has generated a huge controversy. It's a proposal to build a privately funded toll road, a mega version of a super highway that would cut a massive swath through the Lone Star State and would allow truck traffic from Mexico to speed through Texas. There are some bumps in the road to report tonight. Our report from NBC's Don Teague. It would be a super highway unlike anything in the world. A 4,000-mile network of privately operated toll roads connecting Texas' biggest cities with Mexico. The Trans-Texas Corridor, proposed by Governor Rick Perry, would be 1,200 feet wide with separate lanes for trucks, cars, freight trains, even a bullet train. We're mixing a dough. But if Texans like Bill We're Polk here. have their way, it will never happen. It's going to hurt us real bad. I'm sitting here with 103 employees that, that depend on this place. Polk's Bakery relies on customers from Interstate 35, the most congested in the state. But the new highway is designed to move much of the traffic off of interstates, bypassing most cities in its rush to speed truckloads of Mexican goods north. The new corridor will instead plow across farmland, gobbling up more than half a million acres, along with countless homes and businesses. What's more, Governor Perry awarded the first contract to develop the project to a Spanish company, which some say effectively hands control of Texas infrastructure to a European corporation. If we need a toll road, uh, Texans and Americans can build it. In central Texas, farmer and county commissioner Wendell Crunk says it's bad enough that the corridor will destroy some of the best farmland in the world. But and as a private road with few up, on and off ramps, it will also hurt the economy in his Waco district. This is a built for profit, a limited access, no service roads, toll roads. And, and, there's, and there's no way for people to get off to spend the money in your county. We do not want to be converted, I will tell you that much right now. And a very unpopular road, at least in this room. 800 plus locals pack the hall. Most are landowners opposed to a Trans-Texas Corridor, or TTC, dividing their farms or ranches. Tonight is the fourth in a series of meetings. The others were much smaller, and the mood here was decidedly confrontational. We've had two previous uh, open houses, public ha uh, meetings, and the tone was significantly different. Opponents have spent years protesting the proposed 4,000-mile network of roads between Mexico and Texas. They argue the total cost of $125 billion plus is really to help big business and not small towns where they live. All our county, the citizens here, are not going to bear the burden so Walmart can get their cargo into the U.S. cheaper and faster. Okay, I'm just saying. As previously mentioned, the people of the affected area in the Debe to Mondesi section of the highway were told that a gas line was being passed before it was found that the highway section was really the reason for the construction. This is a known maneuver, a trick 
that is used in eminent domain all over the world. There are cases of gas companies, for example, taking local farmers' land by eminent domain law to build a pipeline, whether the community needs energy or not. That's right, they don't even need it. And yet these pipelines are being built. Any wonder why they always get their way? Is it about progress or is it just about profit? 